Hi everybody, Chris here from Truly Holistic and welcome to episode 6 of the 10 days, 10 videos, 10 topics. Now today we're going to be talking about geometry and using geometry with intent. So it's essentially what I do um, as a living here at uh, Truly Holistic okay, in regards to healing people. Um, obviously we do a bit of detective work and dowsing beforehand and, and part of that deal or I shouldn't say part, but a huge part of that deal is a collaboration with the client. You know, the client is listening to their body, listening to or feeling those symptoms. Probably more importantly, we should say it's a feel aspect. Feeling those symptoms that is a communication network through the body, then sharing that with me so I can understand and give some understanding to the client of what's going on, why their body's communicating in that manner and finding out the information of what we need to do, then obviously then I'm going to use an intent coupled with a geometry tool. And that geometry tool is just going to amplify that effect of a, a change or, or a clearing to happen with my intent. Um, and then obviously the explanation, the understanding, trying to put all the pieces of the puzzle together so that client goes away after that end of that session knowing what they need to do, okay? Because energy shifting 24 day, uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, okay? Energy's always changing and shifting. And um, that's why I always say to people, I say, you know, if you wanna be in line with somebody that, that wants to work with you as an energy healer, you wanna be working with somebody that's always changing their practice and shifting their practice because Energy's always shifting and changing. So as an energy practitioner, you want to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening with the energies coming through. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a collaborative effect. Okay, and uh, we're going to be fo focusing on the aspect of how geometry amplifies the intent and just looking at geometry and obviously understanding the importance of intent. It's our power. Every single one of us, whether we're an energy healer or somebody that's not conscious or aware of these, these abilities that we have, we are all creating realities, whether we know it or whether we don't know it, okay? And we'll get into that in a, in a, a very interesting way as well, or about intent. So let's start off with, um, first of all, let's just, with geometry. For anybody that doesn't know what geometry is, okay, geometry is is shapes, okay? Let's, let's just break it down to simplest, simple nature. What are the first things we learn as children? We learn numbers and we learn shapes, okay? And I tell you, like at that time, we just think, okay, we need to know that because you see numbers everywhere and you see everything as shapes, right? Or, or, or you know, like this room here is essentially a cube, right? Um... But we, you know, we don't know that the full knowing or understanding of how powerful shapes numbers can be. Okay, and we're going to be talking about shapes. Okay, so um, and it's structure as well, geometry. Okay, it's formation, and that's where the word information comes from. Funnily enough, okay, when it's things are in formation. Okay, can hold memory, can hold information, and more importantly, when it is structured. Because everything in this reality is here connected to a consciousness. I actually got told the other day that um, everything in this reality, because this is a simulation or simulated program reality, that what you're seeing of me, and I'll use m me as an example here, you are seeing m a projected image of my consciousness. That's what you're seeing in front of you right now in, in front of this video. It's a, it's a, it, the way to explain it to me was very interesting, but it, it, it's, it was, uh, it's, uh, it resonated, um, that the projector screen or the projector machine is your consciousness and it's projecting out light. Okay. All the spectrum of light. And then in this reality, when that light, like a projector hits the projector screen, that's what we're seeing. Okay, so geometry is consciousness, okay, and the thing about geometry too is that 
you know, you can just sit geometry up like I've got up here, and this room's loaded with geometry, okay, and geometry tools, okay? And more importantly, geometry tools that are using sacred measurements, okay? Which are, which are bringing information into this reality that don't originate here, which allows us more knowing and understanding of what's our purpose here and what is this reality that we're, that we're in, okay? And... Um, so even though I'm not actively holding it, using an intent with it, it's consciousness is still coming through it, okay? And it's just that these physical aspects here are all vessels, like the human body here is a vessel for consciousness to interface with this reality, okay? And that's, I'm not just talking about myself, I'm talking about everything. You know, food that we eat, okay? Um, everything you, you think about, okay, is bound or connected to a consciousness. A consciousness here in the now, but also connected to a higher aspect of its own consciousness that is beyond this reality, okay? So, you know, Frank Chester, who created the Chestahedron, and I've got a Chestahedron right here, which is a seven-sided form of geometry, okay? He brought this out about 10 years ago. Before that, you know, we've seen thousands of years of cultures all around the world that have used the seed of life, the flower of life, pyramids, not a chestahedron. So that was pretty special because he was channeled to bring this geometry to humanity at that time, okay? There's always a reason for it, okay? It's a seven-sided form. And that's quite interesting in itself. It's a seven-sided form. And you understand that with some of the other geometry we're going to show you in this video. And also, uh, we've got a numerology video coming up as well. And it's made up of, um, you know, again, just simple shapes, right? A triangle. So there's four triangles. And there's also uh, three diamond or kite geometries. Okay? And they all this, uh, have the same... Um, uh, uh, same surface area, okay? Even though that's a different geomet, different shape to the triangle, still the same surface area, okay? All the seven sides. And it's called a chest heatron, obviously, because of the guy that uh, brought it through. He was channeled that information. And what I loved about it, uh, the guy that was interviewing him said, you know, who was your mentor? And this is a very simple thing about intuition, uh, and we'll talk about that too. I know I'm going off track a bit, but this is interesting. That this is very vital. Is that they ask you, oh, who's your mentor? How, how do you learn all this stuff? And he goes, no one taught me. The only mentor I had was that, the geometry itself. Because it speaks to you. This, this speaks to you. And I know that sounds crazy for the people that have never dealt with geometry before. But it does. And uh, it's always channeling you. I, I'm getting downloads all the time. Okay, but you need to be in a position, in a state, to t allow that to come through. Okay, if, you, if you're out there searching too much, you'll miss the things that are right in front of you. Okay, that's that whole thing about being in the now and being present, being the heart based, which we've talked about in the previous videos, staying out of the mind. Okay. And this brings up this whole thing about intuition. You know, there's a lot of people that say I'm very intuitive. I'm very sensitive, I'm an empath and so on. But they're searching. And I don't believe that's true intuition to me. You should never have to search for anything. Okay, You can be drawn to something, but not actively trying to search something up. Okay, You need to uh, be in the now and let things come into your awareness. Okay, To be, just to be. Okay, Because when we're searching, we're doing. Doings there, beings here. Okay? There's a difference. Okay, and I just really wanted to state that because I'm seeing a lot of people on social media and all, all these other people that are saying they're highly intuitive and very open and aware. Um, they're not. They're, uh, they might be to a certain degree, but they're lessening their power by searching and using this. Stay out of that, stay in here. And that geometry is very much in regards to the heart. Because he found, uh, Frank Chester found that the heart sits in the geometry of a chestahedron. He found the left ventricle is exactly like 
when you round the edges of the geometry, exactly the same shape as a chestahedron. Okay? Um, and he said that the heart, when the heart, you know, like congestive heart failure, when the heart loses its energy, and we know why, because of that gateway of energy that's coming through, the vortex flow through the sacred heart behind the heart, if that gets cut off more up here too much, our heart loses its strength. It's the most important muscle in the body, right? If we look at the body in the physical manner, uh, physical matter. But um, it loses its geometry too, okay? It's formation, it's form, right? That's where the word form comes from too. Okay, so we're going to be talking about some really, really cool stuff, okay? So geometry talks to you. That's number one, okay? Geometry talks to you. Um, now, I'm just having a look. I've got a whole lot of notes in front of me. And again, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not going through a lot of this stuff beforehand. I, I've just got information here, which is just, just on the spot, on the, in the now, right? Okay, so... I've got a number of geometries I use, and um, let's talk about uh, a geometry, uh, cube geometry, okay? Because out there, uh, there's a, it's got a kind of bad rap, the cube, because, you know, uh, the people that talk about, you know, especially with David Icke and I talking about Saturn, you know, and the word Satan comes from Saturn, and, you know, the whole reptilian thing, and, you um, and how that's connected to a black cube. And then we see in uh, Mecca, um, the black cube there as well. And this world, is if, if you understand, if you look at the world in a symbolic way, you'll learn a lot about this reality. Very, very, very important to look everything in a very symbolic way. And when we look at the black cube in a symbolic way, I've been channeled, because I use cube geometry a lot, okay? And I've had people come to me and say, oh, you should be careful with that, because that, you know, isn't that what's connected to Saturn and the, and the dark energy? Let me explain here. <laughs> now, the cube geometry, like any geometry, okay, is not evil, okay? Either a geometry facilitates, okay, an energy through it, or it's a source of energy. And what I found with cube geometry in particular, and why, why I really turn to cube geometry, uh, is that a cube geometry is a source of energy. Okay? Now, how you use that energy, that is the key. And that's, that's your intent. Okay? Right? My mentor always used to, one of my mentors, he always used to say that, see it as this, geometry is the gun, Intent is the trigger, okay? So it's not as geometry is the problem, it's how you use your intent, whether it's going to be constructive or destructive in its nature, okay? And that's going to uh, lead us on to uh, the whole witchcraft thing and spells, because that's about intent, the aspect of intent. As this video is about geometry coupled with intent, we're going to go there too. Now, um... Going back to black cube, okay? The symbolic, okay? There's nothing wrong with the cube, but black is the symbolic nature of your black and white, right? Okay? Or dark and light. Quite often that's the connection, dark and light, right? And the black cube symbolizes that it was dark intent used with that power source or that energy source of the cube. Okay? So the cube's not the problem. It always comes down to how we use our intent. What are we using that energy for? And what to, to create. Okay. So. I don't even actually use a cube itself. Okay. I use a. Uh, I used to use a tesseract. And now we use an ascension cube. Which is a. Uh, is a high dimensional cube. Okay. Now the tesseract is kind of deemed the 4D form of cube. Okay. Even though it's not a cube. It's a 4D form of cube. It's like really saying to someone. Um. A pyramid's still a triangle, yeah, because a pyramid's made up of what? Uh, a, yeah, like a four-sided pyramid. It's made up of four triangles, right? So if you're saying a tesseract and all the other geometries are cubes, well, not really. A, a cube is part of it, but it's not the entire geometry, okay? 
So we used a tesseract, okay, which was a higher dimensional, higher density shape or form, okay? And when ascension's all about elevating us into higher planes of existence, which we're talking about dimensions, we're talking about densities here, wouldn't you want to use a geometry that is very much an associate with those higher levels? So that resonated with me to, to start using those particular tools. So I'm a big fan of the test rack and I use an ascension cube, which is now um, a cube within a cube and then that cube within a cube and then that cube within a cube. So you can see how uh, it's, it's uh, and as we, we go in and go in and we're going higher up in a plane of existence or dimension density, whatever terminology you want to use. And we've been using that and it works very well. Okay. Um, so I wanted to talk a, a bit about the cube in regards to that. So let's move on to witchcraft and spells, okay? Because I do get people coming here uh, for sessions that are very worried about particular people that are practicing witchcraft or putting a curse or spell on me. And that may be happening, for sure, that may be happening. But we must understand that we're all vessels here in the physical form, and we can be utilized like puppets from a, um, a consciousness that is, especially if we're really... Um, anchoring in a consciousness or asking another consciousness to come in and being a conduit for that consciousness. Because if it's not your higher self, because the important aspect is the word self, it's you. If you're bringing in somebody that is not you, a higher aspect of you, they are going to have their own agenda. Always. They may give you some good information, but they're always going to take something in return for themselves. Always. Okay. Just might be some lesser degree of that, and some people might be extreme. And I've I've come across people that healers like that, and they're doing work and they're exhausted. Okay, they've lost all their energy. No wonder. Okay, they're getting answers from this uh, a consciousness, but the consciousness is taking things in return. Okay, it can, you can get in big trouble. Okay, so with I wanted to mention that just for the fact that. We are conduits for consciousness. Make sure it's the right one. And make sure it's your higher consciousness because it's you. It's always going to have your back. It's never going to let you down. Okay? That's, that's been my experience. Now, witchcraft and spells. What we need to understand before we start pointing the finger that maybe someone is doing witchcraft on us, putting spells on us, putting curses on us, is we need, need to really break it down to the basics, okay? The, again, symbolism of everything. And this is to do with the intent, okay? Is that witchcraft is not negative. Again, just like the black cube, it's not negative, okay? People can perhaps dark witchcraft, which is, again, using their choice to use their intent to create harm. But it can also be light witchcraft, so don't throw the word witch or witchcraft out saying that's that's bad stuff or bad juju. People can use it as light witchcraft too. Because the practice of witchcraft is through spells, right? Spells is intent. Okay? Now where does that originally come from? We, we've been programmed when we were kids to think, okay, we read all those books, right? A witch is uh, a, a woman with a pointy nose, a wart on the end of the nose, pointy hat, and throwing things in a cauldron to create a spell. Okay? They make it look bad, right? So when you're later in life, when you hear the word witchcraft, witch, that exactly all spells, that's what you think. Okay? Okay, we've all been programmed. We can all put our hand up in regards to that. But let's look at when we're a child and we're putting letters together, what are we doing to create a word? We're learning how to spell. Okay? So spell is to do with words, okay? Now, when we use our intent, what are we doing? We're casting out a spell, okay? So if we keep that in mind, every single person within this reality, whether they know it or not, are casting spells every minute of the day. It gets the people that are not conscious about how they use their intent, not realizing that's their power. 
and they keep pointing the finger to other people that, hey, you're causing harm to me. Well, perhaps you're causing harm to yourself because of the words you, you're choosing and how you're using your intent. So maybe we should be looking, again, this is the whole thing about ascension, bringing awareness back on self. Okay, because you're the creator of your reality. We need to be very careful how, how we giving off our body language, how we verbally casting out intent. Where is our focus lying? This creates our reality. There might be one reality in front of us, but we're all individually creating our own realities. A number of realities all happening at once. Right? So we need to understand that in regards to intent. Intent's very powerful. Be very careful with the way you use it. Okay? That's, what's, that's what I've learned. Okay? And I, I use, this, that's my job. Okay? With intent and geometry every day. Um, so let's move on. So I'll, I'll show you some geometries I've got here. So I've got a cube here, which I made myself. And that, you know, everyone knows what a cube is. I probably don't need to show you. But it's made with a specific cubit measure. So, so it does bring a particular spectrum of frequencies in too. And that then holds the energy in the space of the, of the cube. Okay. Uh, that's, what, that's what the geometry does. Let's jump to this. This is a, a an onk. Okay, and this comes from uh, the old Egyptian gods, right? And um, they always used to carry this thing in their hand like that, right? And um, the the same thing around the, Egypt is obviously the, the Giza pyramids too. So we're looking at the geometry of the pyramid. And I've been told that, you know, that those pyramids were used to... Cause, because this is a simulated reality, they use the pyramid to uh, to control the plane of existence that this grid was within. And this grid was locking every vessel, human, together, just like a network, just exactly as we see the internet today. Okay? And that was created not for us to all come together and sing Kumbaya, but to really concentrate that energy, okay? And if we could control a mass and program the masses, this whole mind herd re reality, not a conscious, not a collective consciousness, a collective mind, if we could control that, wow, there's a, a huge amount of energy there to be fed off. And that's what was happening for a very long time. Um, and when we look at even the Illum uh, uh, Illuminati, symbolism is that eye at the top of a pyramid well that pyramid was locking us in 3d okay which is nothing to do with here it's about here locking us here in the mind and the eye symbolizes what people call the third eye so locking your third eye in 3d funny that they say the third eye three the number three hmm 3d three so what I've been told to call that now is called the Ascension Eye. Because the three, or when we say the third eye, it does connect to 3D. Okay? So, uh, certain geometries can be used that way. Again, what was the purpose to use the geometry? It's not that geometry is bad, but the purpose of it was to limit us. Okay? Uh, the same thing with the Vatican, right? The Vatican symbol, uh, 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 symbolic of the uh, pineal gland is the pine cone. Okay, so let's look at the geometry of the cone. Okay, so if you round the edges of a pyramid, what do you get? A cone. Okay, that's what you get. You get a cone. Okay, and uh, also when we look at an open-ended gateway, you know, where we talked about in the Holy Grail, we talked about the chalice, where it's like that, and it's like that. Well, an open-ended uh, pyramid, which we've got here running uh, behind the heart, one end of it, which is the sacred heart here, and then the other end of it, source or ascension, is that in the middle, so it's like that at one end, like that, and it, so it comes, it narrows in, in the middle of the gateway, and then expands out again. So if we rounded that, what, what it... It's two cones pointing at each other again. Okay? So the cone geometry does come up a lot. 
And this definitely connects them with the physical eyes because we have cone cells was it within our physical eyes too. And what have they found in the, in the, when they cut the pineal gland in this physical level? They see uh, receptor cells, photoreceptor cells, just like physical eyes. So a lot of interesting stuff there. And I've also had the intel to tell me this onk at that time, because the onk is symbolic. This geometry is symbolic of flow. It's the keyhole. Okay, it's the unlock. So this is symbolic of that time of the key or the keyhole that unlocks the 3D nature or 3D gridding of the pyramids. That's why the gods held it. Okay? They were trying to control the masses, but they didn't want to control themselves. They were the only ones that had the way out. And that's that. That is symbolic of flow, energy flow. Okay? And then we've got other, you know, geometries. We've got the infinity. And we're going to get more into that in regards to the numerology video because when we bring around there, oh, what's that? Eight. Okay, so we'll talk a bit more about that in another video. We've got other ones. Yeah, it's just the cross, right? And in a circle around it. Now, this is called the divinity ring. And what we've been using this for is connecting, allowing you, allowing your divine consciousness to come here and now into this plane. And we can do this at a great, greater measure now because duality energies have shifted off. And when we're talking about divine self, we're talking about that neutrality energy fields coming in. Okay, and what this does is you can use that on the body, but you can use it on your food or your water because remember, they're all connected to a higher consciousness too. Okay, so what we do is we just place it under water, place it under food, and what we do is we bring the higher aspects of their consciousness that are, exist outside of this reality and bring it here. And then when you drink that, ingest that, or eat that food, then it connects with keeping you high vibrational too. What it also does is it makes sure that, because as I say, everything physical in this reality can be a vessel for consciousness, and, I, and that includes bad consciousness that you don't want, the whole entity deal, right? So... If they are tagging into your water or tagging into your food or part of your body and you use the divinity ring, it connects them to their divine self too, which therefore disconnects any bad agenda that they had here and they have to automatically connect to their higher self, their higher aspect of self. So no longer it's a problem to you. Okay? So that's a wonderful tool. We've got the sun ring, which is a great broadcaster of energy, creating anything by just writing on a piece of paper, okay, through frequency. And I've got, I've got a system coming out soon using that as a radionics device, and it's going to be really cool. Um, so we've got some wonderful things coming up in regards to geometry. Now, one last thing I do want to talk about is... Um, now, there's a difference between uh, power of a physical tool and geometry on just a paper or on a screen, okay? Okay, what we've found. It can go a lot deeper into the body when we have the actual physical tool, okay? Now, that's not mainly about that the fact that this is physical and that's on a screen or on a piece of paper. It's more to do with the comfort of how we've been programmed, that this is a physical reality. So... We've been so indoctrinated that everything is physical when really it's just a simulation or, as I say, a projecting image from consciousness on a plane, which we call a simulation. So there is a change within us that makes the so-called physical tool more powerful than the geometry on that's on a paper or a screen, okay? <clears throat> because of this knowing that it's physical, we make it powerful. Because we believe in it more, because if we're, we're so aligned, indoctrinated, and connected to if it's, it's something we can see and feel, it must be real, right? So ascension is about connecting us back to our true self and knowing self. And with that, you get to know what reality really is. Okay? For example, that that this this is not a physic this is not a physical reality and everything is vibration and frequency 
And as we become closer to that true self, we will then not require physical materialistic existence or want it. We will just want to be true to our consciousness, our infinite self, which is just infinite consciousness. And at that point, we won't need these physical things. These are training wheels for us to get there. Okay? Just to believe that in our, in our power. And that's something pretty cool. And that's, that's, that's something geometry can bring us. And also the awareness to use our intent the right way. And when you bring those two together, wow, you've really got something. Okay? Now, last thing I want to mention is another tool that um, I've been using. And that is the Lotus Flower, the Seed of Life, okay? I call this the Ascendant, and this connects you to your Ascendant switch, your higher aspects of your consciousness. Because this is not only that geometry of that, it's also the cubit measure that connects you to that higher part of yourself too. So what we've done here is we've brought cubit measures with the geometry. And what we're starting to do, which we'll get into the video about numerology, we're bringing numerology in it. So we're making tools that have got numerology in it, geometry in it, and cubit measures as well. Okay, this is where everything's going. Okay, and the thing about this, I, I came up with this, yeah, you know, I've obviously, I've, you know, I, I, it told me to do it like this. And I thought, well, what is the shape? I didn't even really know. So I went on to Google and I was like, oh, I've got to find out what this shape is that told me to do. So lo and behold, I, I searched it and this is what came out. The seed of life, okay? The principle of creation, okay? Because these aspects of your higher power is bringing this energy, bring it here, is making you the creator. So it resonated straight away with me. I was like, wow. And it goes, okay, the oldest founding dates, second century BC, it is both known as the seed of life and the six petal rosette. It represents the seven stages because remember we've got three rings on that side three rings on that side one big ring around the outside okay and this, this is connected to the numerology of seven and also when we use the chestahedron what's that seven sided form seven stages steps of creation yes it's an ascendant tool that's what it said and what what did it tell me tell me it wanted me to call it before i even knew any of that the ascendant okay it told me what it wanted it to be so it's an ascendant tool. So I thought I'd leave it. We'll, we'll finish it there. We could talk probably for hours about this, but, you know, got to 30 minutes. So and remember, the competition's still going, okay? And I've been loving all the comments. Keep it going. And uh, we've got more videos coming your way. I'll see you then. Bye.